All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started here, if that's okay. People still trickle in, no big deal. So first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Adam Weinstein, I work at Data Robot on the product team. Uh, Scott Ogden, I work at Health First uh, for, as the lead data scientist there. So we're going to talk to you today a little bit about uh, you know, enterprise AI, AI, how Data Robot um, helps companies you know, build and deploy machine learning models, uh, and also how that works and fits into Tableau and sort of the AI to BI story. So a quick, quick overview of what we'll do. Every, every uh, presentation needs an agenda slide. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves a little more than we just did. Uh, I'm going to try and give a quick overview of AI. Um, ironically enough, like uh, even though I'm a product of Data Robot, I would say I've spent more of my life uh, secret in Tableau than I have in Data Robot. So <laughs> we'll give a quick crash course in AI, uh, what it means, how you can deploy it, how you should think about it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Data Robot and sort of how we work with Tableau. Uh, we'll give you a demo of the product, and then Scott will spend some time digging into how they uh, put the two products together at Health First. Um, so with that, we'll kick things off. So, so quick background on me. Uh, I joined Data Robot earlier this year uh, in February as part of an acquisition they did uh, of a company I started called Cursor. Uh, Cursor also worked with we're Tableau partners, uh, but loosely speaking, we were in the data catalog space. Um, and the idea for Cursor came to me from the time I was at LinkedIn. I helped lead our business operations and analytics team, a team of 350 analyst data scientists. Um, where we struggled to collaborate around data modeling uh, and understanding things uh, at scale. And so, uh, big Tableau shop, right? I think we had 6,000 Tableau users, roughly. Um, but, uh, and I still use Tableau today and write a lot of SQL, but um, you know, joined and, and helped us build out our catalog at Data Robot, uh, and then more recently uh, jumped up to help lead uh, the product team. Cool. Scott? Yeah. Um, Hi, Scott again. Uh, I've been in this healthcare analytics space for around eight years now on the provider and payer side, so um, that's been fun. Um, I'm going to talk to you about our integration of machine learning into BI. Uh, we'll, more to come on that. Um, and if you've ever met me, you would definitely have seen pictures of my new baby. So you'll see. You'll see later. All right. So like every slide in any tech presentation. It needs a quote from an Elon Musk, a Steve Jobs on a black backdrop saying something very ominous, right? So um, yeah, th this is sort of our choice of that. But the idea being that if you're not thinking about AI in your organization, you're, you're, you're not just missing out. Uh, you're going to be, you know, uh, you're going to be losing from a competitive standpoint in the not too distant future. And as Elon Musk will say, your competition will crush you. But um, we'll, we'll try not to be so, so negative at the start here. Um, so when, when you think about AI and machine learning, uh, one of the questions that often comes up is like, what is AI, right? It, it, it's not one thing, it's a class of things. Um, and so, you know, AI goes back 50 years, right? If you look at kind of these dollar signs, the gray, quote unquote, boring stuff are, you know, business rule systems that have been around or things that help automate decision making, but that aren't necessarily, you know, rocket science, machine learning type problems or, or solutions, um, but they help automate uh, things inside an organization. You know, inside of that, you've got another group of, of, of uh, you know, problems that are being solved by machine learning. Um, much larger in terms of opportunity, uh, at least that's how we think of it. Um, and they're le learning from the past to predict the future. So you're taking historical data that you have inside your business, and you're using that to like, build a model that ultimately will then uh, predict or, or, or make a decision for you um, in, 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 the, in the future at some point. And then there's a smaller group inside of that that um, I think you'll hear a lot about uh, in recent, recent years, recent months, uh, that, that's more deep learning in nature. So different style of, of, of machine learning, but um, using different types of uh, you know, mathematics and statistics, but, uh, you know, but also in that, same, in that same realm. So machine learning is, is a two-stage process, like I just mentioned, right? There's the notion of taking raw data and training a model. And then there's uh, the second piece, which is using that trained model to then score or predict uh, the future. Uh, at least that's, that's, that's how we think about it. Um, and so you know, if, if you take that one step further, looking at this chart, you might be able to infer that, oh, if I, if I look at this, I've got scatter plot roughly up and to the right, one axis, I've got square footage, another, I've got sales price, these are you know, homes. Uh, oh, if I have a square footage I, uh, for a home, I should be able to predict the price. And you're right, that if you look at the line, you could draw some you know, kind of best fit curve to that. And that line might be the model. But if you just look at square footage, you're missing out on a lot of other things. Um, you're missing on that there's the tons of other variables that go into that, right? There's the location, there's the, you know, how many baths and bedrooms, and what are the finishes of each, and, you know, like, when was it built, and, uh, you know, tons of other things. What's the style? What was it, when was it last refurbished? Um, is there even a house there anymore? Um, lots of things that, uh, you know, if, if you just rely on that one variable, you'll, you'll miss out. And so the, the act of training is taking all that understanding or all that data that you have 
um, and, and using it to build a model that will ultimately predict that home price. And there are a number of tools that can do that. I mean, we think we're you know, quite good at it, but there, th that's been around for quite some time. And I, you know, I don't want to stand up here and say, hey, we're the only ones that do this. Um, we think we make it quite easy. Uh, but it's, 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 it's something that's, um, you know, computers do quite better than, than humans, right? You can't look at all these things and, and just kind of guess, right? You have to use a computer to do that. So the, the, the high level uh, narrative here is that the machine learned from the historical data to build a model that then can predict the future. Then it comes to scoring. And how can you, uh, you know, use uh, the model that you've then just built to predict something? So in a healthcare example, you might say, uh, okay, I've got um, you know, maybe some, some historical patient data, and I'm trying to help uh, arrive at you know, the best possible outcome. Maybe that's determining whether I should discharge somebody from an ER because you know, are they at risk for being readmitted? Or maybe it's I've got a series of procedure codes. How do I predict what might be necessary to like, ultimately come to the best resolution quickest? Um, you know, all those things can be trained into a model, uh, and then they ultimately should help you predict what you should do next in that, in that, uh, in that scenario. Um, there's examples outside of healthcare, right? Like you know, financial services and retail, and uh, the, you know, the list is, is you know, endless. But um, the idea being that you know, if you build the model to actually get value out of it, you then have to use it in some environment where you can make a decision or make a prediction. So machine learning versus AI, just to kind of recap, right? So machine learning models are developed to answer a, a question. They learn from historical data, and they're used to make a prediction. AI then takes that prediction, combines it with some sort of business uh, logic or, or uh, you know, actual uh, data. So you know, you've got the model trained. You want to now decide for the next uh, you know, patient or the next example um, what should happen, and then ultimately takes an action against it. So what are the challenges here? So you, know, you think back in the realm of BI, and how difficult, if you go back to say 20 years, it was to build and deploy dashboards. It took an engineer to do that. And Tableau came along and made that uh, a much easier process, right? Like anybody with a Tableau desktop license can go take data, connect to it in a database, take it from an Excel spreadsheet, build a beautiful dashboard, and deploy it. Um, data science, historically, has also been a very, very difficult uh, problem to solve. I mean, you had these sort of unicorns of, of, of skills that could write code, that understood math and stats, that knew how to uh, talk to the business, that could get at the data, that could you know, feature engineer the data. We'll talk about what that is in a second. Um, and, and it was very difficult to get machine learning models into production. And so what Data Robots come along and done, and, and the founders of Data Robot were data scientists, um, and said, okay, how do we break that up into steps that we can help automate and make easier for someone that just has data comfort, so a business analyst or above. Um, and, that's, and, and, and the idea being that like, if you can do that, not only can you get more models into production, but those more, well, the more models you get into production have more impact on your business. There are all kinds of things inside of a company that you know, some of them have hundreds of millions of dollars of ROI, some of, them, some of them have hundreds of thousands of dollars of ROI. And if it takes you a year to get a model into production, you know, the, the, the number of use cases you'll be able to address is quite small. So DataRobot uh, was started to help automate this sort of end-to-end -end story of, of, uh, of data science. So a bit about us, you know, standard slide with lots of numbers, but we're a big company. Uh, we have about 1,000 employees. Uh, we've raised quite a bit of capital to help take, take uh, uh, you know, um, product to market and, and grow the business. Um, we've delivered quite a bit of ROI, and as you can see, there's, uh, we're working with, with a large number of organizations. But this is a slide I like to use to talk about what that end-to-end -end story looks like. Um, and so you know, on one end, you have data. And that data can be anywhere in your business. It could be at a, you know, in a data warehouse, in a database, in a business system. It could be a flat file on your machine that you got from an external company or attached to an email. But that data has some sort of historical value in the sense that it, it represents what happened in the past. Um, and we have a catalog that we've built, uh, came, came over as part of the, the Cursor team, um, that uh, will help you organize data that you use for machine learning. Um, the next thing you do with that raw data is then you, you want to engineer it uh, to build a model from it. And that, and that, uh, that process, often known as feature engineering, uh, is specific to machine learning. It's not like feature engineering or, or say, uh, preparing data for, for BI where you oftentimes aggregate things. You actually want things to be as atomic or low level as possible, typically. Um, and so DataRobot performs a lot of these steps automatically for you um, to, to help you know, fit to, to different types of models. Uh, but that, that, that's sort of the next step from raw data. Then you actually want to identify which model is most appropriate for the, for the prediction you're trying to make. And so if you look at, um, say, like a, a, you know, a, a basic regression, right? Like that might be uh, best for one class of, of data. On the other end, you might have, um, you know, a deep learning model that might be best for a different type of data. And so 
Uh, what, what Data Robot does is help automate selecting that model. We'll actually automatically attempt to build uh, you know, 40 to 100 different models, depending on the use case, and, and figure out which one best fits the data that you've, you've provided and, and the target that you've selected. Then there's the act of deploying that, right, which um, you know, can take a different set of skills in terms of like, infrastructure, engineering, et cetera. Um, and like, once you've deployed the model, then you have to figure out, has it, you know, is it working? Is it performant? Just like a dashboard, if it takes five minutes to load, you haven't uh, exactly uh, made anyone's life too much easier, at least, right? So um, you know, we, we do all these things in the end, and then at the end, um, where Tableau fits in quite nicely is, now that I've got a model in production, it's helping my business make decisions, how do I visualize that in terms of the impact it's had on my company? So uh, Data Robot uh, connects and integrates with Tableau to be able to push that prediction uh, information into Tableau to be visualized and say, hey, this model we deployed saved us this many millions of dollars by uh, comparing the you know, prediction that it made versus, say, the outcome that it had. And so, you know, synopsis of that, right? You can, you can drag a dot, drop a data set in, and I'll show you this here in a moment. Um, you will quickly evaluate, you know, hundreds of different models to figure out which is most appropriate. We'll select the ones that we think are best, and they'll ultimately recommend a single model for deployment. Um, and you can literally with a click of a button then deploy that. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that here in, uh, in, a, in a demo in a second. But um, when it comes to AI, I mean, I think BI is very similar. Um, there's an art to storytelling. And so, uh, you know, I think, for those that uh, you know, use Tableau, uh, you know, often like there's an art to building dashboards. There's an art to I think telling a story around AI. So explaining how a model works and translating how a model works. Uh, Data Robot has a, a bunch of compliance documentation that's built in. So when you actually select a model, you can hit a button and get you know rich explanation of what actually is happening inside that model, which you know is is uh, you know, quite quite complicated, especially as you get to some of the more uh, you know deep learning or, or neural network type models. Um, we can also uh, explain. Um, you know, what, what's, what's happening with the data. So what, what actions are being taken against the raw data that you had, um, not just in terms of modeling, but in terms of what, what uh, transformations were performed to allow it to fit to that model. And then finally, uh, you know, how do you trust the prediction that was made? So how do you explain what features or what, what pieces of raw data went into that prediction? You may have a 2,000 column set of data, but maybe only 20 of those or 200 of those actually matter in that given prediction. So we need to make these things, uh, you know, clear and explainable, um, and so that's, you know, a large part of what, what the AI storytelling process looks like. So as we look at how Data Robot pairs with Tableau, uh, part of that is that explainability. You can see here as, as an example of a, a readmission case, we explain you know, which diagnostic codes or which, which, which features actually are important to that decision that is being made uh, for this particular patient here. Um, another another uh, extension that we have um, that we, we've built, uh, which actually came from last year, is actually allowing you to consume predictions from within uh, Tableau. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through these. Um, but, but the idea being that, like, just as I have a model deployed doesn't mean that it's you know, the right environment for everyone in my business to consume it. So if I can consume it from within Tableau, uh, I, can, I can hopefully democratize or you know, expose that model to more and more people inside my business. So yeah, with that, I'll, I'll get to, to, to showing you the demo here. But if you think about the sort of end-to-end -end story, um, you know, a user starts with Data Robot. They can build models very quickly and deploy them. Uh, we can govern those models and, and you know, make sure that they're uh, performant and, and you know, available. And then you can take the scores that come out of those and use those in prediction, or use those predictions in, uh, in dashboards or applications uh, like a Tableau for, for uh, visualizing and, and communicating with the rest of the business. Um, so with that, I will jump in to product here real quick. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, all right. So, Data Robot. There's a couple different ways to, to get started, right? Um, one, you can literally drag and drop data in. Um, but another approach is actually you can uh, you can go. We have a catalog, like I mentioned, that you can see a bunch of data sets. So, if you think about uh, you know how do you um, best collaborate with those around your business, uh, sometimes having a catalog can be a great way to do that. So, I think everyone that saw Keynote, right? Catalog uh, uh, is something that. that Tableau has as well. Um, they're great you know, ways for, for teams or software products to uh, allow collaboration inside of a company. Um, so in this particular example, I'm going to actually pull up a, uh, set, a use case. This actually came, so it's open source data. Um, it's a, a hospital readmission use case. So there were a bunch of patients, um, diabetic in nature, that um, uh, you know, they were, were trying to predict whether or not a person should be discharged uh, from a hospital based on a number of different features that we have. So you can see here, I can remember my, uh, 
let's see here. Yep, my Excel com you know, hotkeys here. Um, we've got you know everything from where they came from to what diagnostic codes have they had, um, you know, how many times have they been here, uh, you know, how many diagnoses have they had, do they have any of these uh, you know given uh, you know conditions or blood uh, blood work that's 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 been run? Um, you know, number of different things that probably are beyond my non-medical uh, expertise, but um, you can also see descriptions here. So there's text data, there's numerical data, there's true-false binary data, right? And at the end of the day, you've got whether or not they ended up being readmitted. So this is training data that we're going to use to help build a model. Um, and so that's let's let's go ahead and get started here. So if I simply select the file that we have here, um, what Data Robot will then do. Uh, when it uploads the data, it will it will assess and sort of statistically analyze what's in that in that data. It's often known as exploratory data analysis. So, give it about 15 seconds to run here. Um, and once that's complete, you'll be able to get you know a quick overview of what's in the data. Something you could have done by yourself, but that would probably take call it you know a few hours to do manually if you wanted to. Give this a second here. All righty. So if I scroll down here, you'll see a bunch of statistics pop in here, right? I can see, you know, where did people come from? What were the different disposition IDs? You know, uh, how many emergencies do they have? You know, zero, one, it looks like. Uh, what are different diagnostic codes? Um, we can see a bunch of different things, and, and we'll even, um, you, know, uh, you know, show you which, which features we think have, you know, the most missing values, that kind of thing. Um, but the goal here is to actually come up and say, what am I trying to predict, right? So we're trying to predict for this readmitted, you know, uh, uh, you know, outcome and, and whether or not a person is likely to be readmitted. Um, so if I, uh, you know, click start here, what'll end up happening, and I'll, I'll do that here now, uh, is we'll start building a whole bunch of different models that we think are best for this use case or best for this, uh, this data set. Um, so I'll do that now and I won't, I won't let it finish the whole thing because it takes probably three to four minutes for a data set of this size. But um, you'll see that it'll, it'll do all the things a typical data scientist might. So it'll create partitions of the data and hold out data so we can test it at the end of the process. Um, it'll, it'll characterize target variable. It'll go analyze all the features. And then it does this last step, which is uh, generate blueprints of the model. So the blueprints would be the series of steps that are being taken to ultimately fit the data to the model. Um, and then ultimately, you know, then building that model and, and then uh, seeing how it performs against the holdout data. So I'll, I'll skip the uh, waiting process and, and, and show you kind of what the outcome looks like. But at the end, what you end up having is, is, a, is a list of models and a recommended model for deployment. Um, and so if I look at this model, this is actually the blueprint for that model, right? So it takes the data, it, it you know, in, in, interprets or you know, transforms and identifies what's a categorical text variable, et cetera. Each one of these things, you can actually see what the details of them are if you want to dive in deep. Um, some of them even go further than that, where we have a whole documentation page on it, so you can understand like what does that actual step mean. Um, you know, there's things here that are feature engineering in terms of like I'm actually con like changing data. Like so, this was uh, you know text. If you remember the text on the far right there, it's taking that text data and splitting it up and using it um, you know as a series of engrams to actually build the model. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, it recommends this because you know it's it's most accurate, um, and it also is is uh, you know I think nearly most performant. Um, actually, no, it's most performant and second most accurate. But th there's, there's this balance of getting performant and accurate, right? And the, the most accurate may not always be the best for deployment, the most performant may not always be the best, because you want the right combination of the two. Um, but, but beyond that, if you're, actually, if you're into the data and you want to actually go play with things even further, you can look at, you know, how do I understand, uh, you know, which features have the most impact on, uh, on this particular model? So, like, uh, if I look at, you know, these are the columns in the original data set in which are most predicted, predictive of someone being uh, likely to be re readmitted, right? So the discharge disposition ID, very predictive of whether they'll get uh, readmitted. Um, you know, like where they came from, uh, you know, what diagnoses do they have? Things you would expect, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it's, 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 I guess, not guaranteed, right? Um, taking a step further, we can actually even get prediction explanations here for a given uh, set of data. So I can see for, you know, for, for a given patient, right, and a given outcome, what features are most predictive or, or least predictive, for that matter, if I want to, um, for, for a given prediction. And I can even, uh, I guess, again, if you're into sort of the, the data science aspect of things, I can actually look at, uh, you know, like the ROC curve, or I can look at different prediction thresholds and distributions um, to understand, uh, you know, how this model works and, and, uh, and so on. So, um, 
I mentioned the last piece of this is actually being able to make a set of predictions or generate a set of predictions. So there are a couple ways you can do that in a product. Um, you, can, uh, you can do that here with just, hey, I want to upload a set of data, like new data, and I want to make a prediction from it. We can also deploy uh, an API that you can then consume from anywhere inside your business. So you could imagine uh, an external system that just makes a programmatic call to us to generate a prediction. We can deploy a server, and I've actually already got one here running that I'll show you in a second. Um, and then you know, wire that into that system and, and have the, the prediction come back. Um, you can also even export the code manually. So let's just say you want to throw this on an IoT device somewhere or a server that's disconnected from DataRobot for you know, security purposes. Um, that's also an option. I think the, the benefit there is that like, you own that code and that code is able to be you know, moved at your leisure or for that matter scaled at your leisure uh, in, in some sort of external system. Um, and that could be in you know, Python or Java and, and that kind of thing. So um, what I wanted to show in terms of, of Tableau um, is one of the things we can do is when it comes to making predictions and then actually make, consuming them, we can take that model deployment uh, and actually push the predictions into uh, you know, a Tableau data source. So you could imagine, say someone's making you know, gobs and gobs of predictions, I can then push those outcomes into a Tableau data source and visualize that in Tableau. Um, so I'll show you that here. And this is something we, we just uh, announced here today. Um, all right, so if I want to select a data source, and I didn't go too deep in this in the catalog, but the catalog can connect to a whole bunch of different places, just like you imagine Tableau can connect to you know, whether it's a Microsoft SQL Server or some sort of cloud database or Hadoop cluster or even just flat files. Um, we can connect to a bunch of different places. So I can take a data set in the catalog. I can plug in, oops, my fault. I can plug in, uh, pull this up real quick here. I can select the data set. I can then type in, let's see if I remember the login here. Uh, and then I can select which columns from this data set I want to end up in that data source. Um, and then give, uh, give it a Tableau instance to push to. So this could be Tableau Cloud, could be on-prem, could be whatever you want. Um, I'll skip the like waiting for this part and just show you what it looks like when it gets done. But we'll ultimately push a series of batch predictions into this Tableau data source. And then you can take that and visualize it. So in this case, we, we had the uh, patient readmission. We took uh, a few thousand predictions, actually uh, a thousand, I should say. Um, and, and created a uh, data source that had the outcomes of those, of those uh, patients, um, or predictions, I should say, and which ones are high risk, low risk, et cetera, um, and then created a few different views. So you could imagine there's an administrator view here. It might be useful for a hospital administrator to see across the spectrum of you know, all patients that are coming in and going out. Uh, a manager view that might be useful for maybe the, the person that's managing the ER that night or having to understand like, what's going on for just my individual view of the world. And then a nurse view, which might be useful for just their particular, um, you know, their particular shift or their particular station. So I could come in and say, okay, uh, which nurse am I? I'll say I'll select uh, this one here, and then I can see for my 24 patients what is what does the world look like, right? And I can actually come in and see, okay, for this I've got someone that's high risk. Um, they have, uh, you know, here's why they're high risk, right? There's a few explanations here. Um, as to what, what, what you know, supports that from a feature perspective, um, and so on. So that is, uh, that is the demo in a nutshell. So cool. I'll hand it over to Scott now, if that's okay. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Adam. All right. That's me. Um, we're going to talk about how we used, uh, we went on our analytics journey from uh, like a SAS to Excel email your reports kind of shop to a uh, sophisticated data viz and machine learning kind of shop. So we're going to talk about the principles that I think you need to, to go on that journey and then give some examples of data product that, that support that. Um, uh, uh, have the obligatory... Uh, data science cartoon as we start. My takeaway from this, it's, it's kind of funny, um, is just that we're all members of the same team. We're trying to do something smart with data, um, whether machine learning, analysts, what have you, engineer. Um, we're, we're trying to affect the lives of our members. 
little bit more about me, you can see that I'm clearly motivated by getting data-based onesies for my new kid. His name is Jay, and he's the best thing in the world. Um, also my cat. You can follow me on Medium. I talk about the social determinants of health. Um, uh, any of you in healthcare know that that's one of the biggest predictors of pretty much any adverse outcome that happens. So uh, more, to, more of that on Medium. Um, more importantly, uh, who's health first? Uh, we are a uh, New York City-based health plan that is sponsor-owned, uh, risk-shared by provider hospitals around the city. All the big names you think in, in New York City healthcare um, sort of uh, take part of the risk-sharing arrangement for Health First. Um, we, we like to say, if you go on the subway, one in seven of the people you see, and if you're in the Bronx, it's more like one in four, are Health First member. So we're a highly local group that care about mostly Medicaid and Me Medicare managed care type members that are deeply invested in the community. And so our job in building a data analytics function at Health First is really to serve our members. Um, and this leads to my sort of waxing philosophic here about this is um, my job isn't to know what XGBoost does. I mean, it's nice if I do. But the job is really is, is mission-oriented. It's about getting the services to the members uh, who need it. Um, uh, at, like Adam was supposed to say, uh, technology is easy, <laughs> but the people are complicated. So um, the talk, uh, as I wanted to frame it, was how you do this in an enterprise and how you go from AI to BI, and everyone's like, Scott, that's wrong. Everyone, you know, we want to turn our BI into AI, and I, I think that's bass backwards, um, in the sense that uh, work gets done with BI, with dashboards, with reports, with spreadsheets. Um, so we want we want to abstract. Like machine learning shouldn't be this ethereal thing that only a few like Python programmers, programmers can do. We should be able to inject it to all layers of our business. We say it's not rocket science, it's data science. Uh, it's a joke. Um, but basically, we just sort spreadsheets. Um, well, well, why AI uh, and, and not, why, why would we need to do this? Why would we need to experiment with automated machine learning? Well, uh, we get a lot of data. We, uh, our providers provide lots of services to our customers every day. And we want to we wanna do a lot of things. We have an ambitious sort of agenda to, like, actively change how healthcare looks in New York City. Um, you don't have to read all that, but that's uh, uh, an abbreviated list of all the things we could possibly use AI for in our business. Um, and so the idea that we could just hire enough people like, to do that is, is, is kind of like ludicrous. Um, so there has to be some other creative ways to do this, and it's about building the capability for the organization and, and proving its value. So how do you do the AI in, in a business, well, um, there's a couple of like really simple principles. Again, it's not rocket science, but you, you need to get the data in the company, all the data that you've ever seen in the company in one place so that it can talk to each other. That's a huge thing in a 26-year-old company like Health First. Um, you could imagine various distributed sources that don't ever communicate with each other. And machine learning works best when you, when you have a holistic customer view. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, you might as well just like buy an, uh, an app on top of whatever product that's labeled machine learning. Um, um, so, and then you need to expose that in, uh, to the people who can use it, the analysts, so creating this like um, core asset type work where everyone can get the same answers to the same questions in reliably. Um, and then you really need to build out a consulting arm of your analytics function. So, um, and, and some of our, our, our people are here today. If you hear any heckling, it's probably the first row from Health First. Um, uh, so you need to build out this consulting wing where you, you understand what actually matters to the business and you can filter the signal to the noise in that. Um, and then it's really about, and this is where Tableau comes in, getting that, getting that machine learning insight, that business insight back to the people who can do stuff about it. Um, on the front lines. And all of this to say is that this gains the ground to build new, more advanced capabilities in the future for the organization. So one of the ways you do the AI is um, think like a management consultant. And if you've ever met one in real life, they think in two by twos, always. Um, you prioritize value versus readiness. And, um, and I think that's great. You know, um, so um, you, 
when you, when, you, when you go out to, to your business areas and talk to them, you, you need to get a thumb in their version of, of how much it's worth. And then, uh, do we have the talent, do we have the technology, do we have the data to do it? And, um, and so you just go down the, you go, you go down the square, right? You, there's the Nike quadrant, just do it. Um, like, please just do it today. Like, why haven't you done it already, kind of thing. Um, and then there's the solve for dependencies for the high value, low readiness type work. Um, and, and that is about getting that technology infrastructure, getting the right people to solve those problems. And then there's the other work where like, you do it if you have spare time or if you really want to or as a favor. Um, and then, there's the, then this is the important one too, is just never do that lower quadrant there, the red one, because like, if it's not valuable and you can't do it, like, like why? And that, that, that's important. Getting, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a modeling problem, like extracting the signal from the actual business requests. Um, and so once you got that is, is you have to build a great data product type department uh, with, with, with Tableau. Uh, that's how we, we did it. So Tableau came first on our analytics journey. And I view it as the shield for me to operate underneath. Like, because we're able to do so much so well with our data viz team, that the data science team can play around with crazy tools like automated machine learning and data robot and, and graph theory and Neo4j. And we wouldn't have been able to do that at all if, that, if, the, if the analyst team wasn't able to carve off that capacity and, and build that new capability towards the future. So it's, that's a pretty important thing on our journey. Um, and I'm not gonna go too much into this, but it's important to build a data or cloud architecture that supports um, the, the, the people that you hire, the smart people that you hire to do the work. Um, that's it, getting the data in one place, getting it in raw, getting it all, no filters, no where clauses, ever. You just get it there and then you can refine it later with your engineers um, and then you can push that out into publish and you can refine that all that way. So that's the, the, my high level cloud architecture version. Oh, crazy. We can talk more about that off to the side if we want, but because I like cloud architecture. Um, uh, I think Adam had a better version or a prettier version of this slide, but basically how it looks under the hood is not crazy complicated. It's some data poll from SQL or PySpark or something, you put it in a, in a tool like DataRobot or, 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 or any of the other ones. Um, for scoring, abstractly uh, uh, on, the, on the high level, like push those back into CSVs, put them back into Redshift, then, then it's all exposable for the typical BI type lifecycle, like what are the models doing? Can we report on the governance? Can we report on why the models are making the choices they are? Are they biased? Like healthcare ethics is a, is a huge passion uh, of mine and it's absolutely necessary when you're trying to do a population health holistic view of, of let's say New York City. Um, and so this, this all leads into this like retraining type, like when do you rebuild models? Well, you can only rebuild models if you know if they're doing something wrong. And so Tableau is our way of doing that. And so what does this look like? Uh, what does is, what is good look like for me on this journey? Um, it sh uh, models shouldn't be the hard part of this. I actually think it's the easiest part. I think what really matters is getting the business problems that matter, talking to people, trying to get that work uh, to actually affect our members. Um, getting and then the data stuff too is a different kind of problem, but that's, that's the hard stuff. So, um, so good looks like getting models into the, the traditional BI reporting structure that we, ha that we built out with Tableau and, and actually getting it in the hands of people that can affect our members. So what, is, what does it look like at Health First so far? What does is, what is the actual work work look like? Uh, well first, we're able to um, vastly outcompete uh, external like modeling kind of vendors that you, you might typically hire if you don't have a data science team. Um, we've been able to do that across various domains. This one is, is Medicaid churn, um, and so we're, we were able to use the data ro robot product to vastly improve the accuracy of the retention model. Um, moving more into the, the Tableau integration for data science, um, as Adam said, readmissions are a big part of any, anyone who's ever like, even talked to someone in healthcare. Like that, they, they know about readmissions. And, and for a health plan, um, uh, 
this is both a, like a med cost, a quality, and uh, a star's opportunity for, for, for value add. And um, so this is, this is a model that we, that we score every day for the people who are in the hospital or who just left the hospital. And we provide those scores, those risk that risk stratification to our care managers every day, every morning, and to our sponsor hospitals as well. And so that's really just getting the information into the people's hands who, who are actually calling our members and saying, like, how can we help you with, with your healthcare journey? And so um, that has been, uh, and how does it look? Well, um, like I said, we're sorting spreadsheets, uh, just a little better. Um, you can see the care manager, Ariana Grande. I don't know if you can read it, but it's Ariana Grande. Um, and she, she has a high case mix, so we should probably reassign some of those people. Um, but like, thank you, next. Um, <laughs> another, sorry, bad joke. Um, so another, <laughs> another area is um, asthma-based preventable admissions for our kids in Medicaid. Um, and uh, one of the first projects I actually worked on Health First was this one. And uh, we, we, tried to provide, we tried to use Tableau as a way of uh, providing an ROI estimate on like, if you use my recommendations, it's, it's sort of holding me accountable to the modeling work and saying, if you use my recommendations and you, and you go down the list and you intervene on people in that order, well, there's a couple of assumptions. How much does the intervention cost and how effective do you think it is? Um, if you build those assumptions into the dashboard, well, you can get an estimate like, all right, we need $60,000 or we need to hire five employees or, or, or whatever to, to actively affect that measure. Um, and so this is a way of, of building that trust and we try to you know, distribute that outwards. Um, so, cool. Um, another uh, example which I think has been uh, pretty meaningful to me is are people taking their medications? And this is in the health plan space a uh, triple weighted stars measure uh, so high, highly important uh, measure for, for lots of reasons, both operationally and quality-wise, because if you don't take your medicines, you're probably going to go to the hospital, and like, yeah, it's not good. Um, so how, again, two by two, management consultant, how I thought about this is, is from the uplift modeling perspective, and if, if you haven't heard of that, it's mostly just combining models and using them together. So we built models from, to predict the risk of non-adherence, but then, to also predict who, you know, what is the likelihood if we call someone or we email them that they're gonna respond? And then what's the likelihood if we get in touch with them that they're gonna change their behavior and like go to the pharmacy and get their meds? Um, that kind of thing. So you can combine all of that and say, this is my strategic prioritization for who to reach out to when. Um, that's not just simply based on are you gonna be are you going to be not adherent or not? Because you want to find the influenceables. That's the, 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 the people you can, you can change. Um, so uh, Brett made this dashboard. Brett's right there. Hi, Brett. Um, uh, which is awesome. So um, we, uh, pre preliminarily, um, and this is not any causal modeling anything. It's just uh, year over year, we saw an 8% improvement on the engagement rate and 7% improvement on the did they go to the pharmacy within seven days of intervention, which I, I think is, is super meaningful. It's just, from my perspective, being a part of the strategy conversation with pharmacy, um, having that back and forth, working with our data consultants, like that's, um, that's, that's the job. Uh, also, we did some more stuff, um, but I'm not gonna have a slide for all of them. This is various stages of production and use, and use in the business, but. Uh, there's definitely lots of use cases, but def and this stuff was enabled by having a tool that cuts cuts a modeling time from, you know, uh, a month or so, which is how long I usually take. Maybe I'm bad at it, but a uh, month or so to to like hours. I mean, it's mostly about getting the data at that point, which I think is how it should be. And so this leads me to my overarching thesis that I'm getting towards is that. When you have Data Robot and you have Tableau working together, well, you, you turn AI into BI. Um, they're only one letter apart. And uh, so that's, that, that works in an enterprise because people know reports. People know how to use spreadsheets or use dashboards, data viz. Like that's how people do work in the real world and not 
some ethereal like machine learning world. So, um, and this one, this dashboard is hot off the presses. Uh, I think, I think we got this last week or something. Um, this is um, uh, this is me eating my own dog food and putting all the models in one place for everyone to query across my org and eventually, hopefully, across network. Um, more to come on that, I hope. But uh, the idea is, can we can we find the members who are at high risk for you know churn, uh, but also you know high, maybe high social needs? So if you're going to build a, like a population health strategy to work out to work for those people with high social needs, well, you have to be you have to be thoughtful about is that adding customer abrasion? And so maybe there's a specific intervention that works for that cohort. Um, and this is my like scroll over uh, uh, for this, so you can see people's risk over trending over time. Are they getting higher likelihood to go to the hospital or higher likelihood to churn over time as more data comes in, as more interactions come in, sort of thing? Um, but 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 really, like you're able to you're able to build a more holistic, customer specific strategy rather than like in the aggregate. We say like we think this member. Um, is risky for these things and not these things. So we should tailor their care, whether it's on a mobile app or whether it's care management or, or what have you, we should tailor that to what our models have, have shown. I mean, um, we, should, we should use them all together strategically. And uh, so all I have left are like summary slides, um, which is basically that you know, Data Robot has, has vastly improved our time to market and enabled us to do a lot more work than we probably would have otherwise been able to. Um, and Tableau is how you do work in the real world and how, how we actually meaningfully affect our business and our members. So um, that combination has been just so natural uh, for us. And um, what do we want to do in the future? Well, uh, actually, this year we hosted a uh, Tableau user group for healthcare in New York City, which was super exciting and I think super successful. Um, Adam, you should get on making the data robot user group, but maybe don't call it DRUG. That's a little weird. Um, uh, sorry, I have bad jokes. I'm a dad now, I can. Um, uh, <laughs> so um, I'm going to end with my, my final point, point here is that like my, like my role and how I see data scientists and analysts' roles evolving in the future is, is you know the data, you know, and you, you've been in the business, and you know the things that matter. So, your your job isn't to, to your job isn't to like write the actual code itself. That like that's tangential to actually getting stuff done. And so the the role evolves into this evangelist and and management consultant type type thing when you when you have tools like Data Robot that can support a, like a, a more enterprise forward strategy on on data. And I think that's it. Um, I think we're both hiring at New York City for us, but are you guys there? Um.